all glory. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it because we have a choice. Amen? Remember, what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. So if I speak light, I eat light. Amen? Psalm 16. We are going to speak this. Because we're going to eat this. Is everybody there? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. How many of y'all know that God gives you counsel even when you sleep? He's putting things in you while you're sleeping because our brain is so busy while we're awake. Sometimes we're not hearing while we're awake. So he's got to speak to you while you're sleeping. And you don't even know what he's speaking to you, but you wake up and all of a sudden there's a, it's a difference. There's like, huh, I think I'm supposed to do this. Or, you know what? I need to repent. See, God even convicts you while you sleep. Oh, glory. Glory. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the what? Night. Night seasons. While you're sleeping. I have set the Lord what? I have set the Lord what? When you feel like it? Always. I have set the Lord always before me. That's why people blow it. Because they don't set the Lord before them. They set themselves before them. They set things, they set their desires, they set everything else before them but the Lord. When you don't have the Lord before you, there is no relationship. That's called relationship. This is what relationship is. You're setting the Lord before you. You always see him. Always. Does everybody get this? He's always before you in every decision and everything you're doing. He's always before you. Even when you open your mouth out of time. Yeah. Snap, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but he's always before you. So when he's always before you, you go, sorry, dad. Yeah. See, it's a father-child relationship. There's a relationship in where it's commander and soldier. But this always starts off as a father-child. Always. And as he raises us up, there's a time to battle and there's a time for fellowship. There's a time to pray and there's a time to repent. There's a time of every season and every purpose. But there's something that always must be a constant. He must always be before you. You know why? Because if you're getting ready to touch someone clean, you're going to get convicted. Amen? You're, getting, you're thinking about something you're going to say because you got offended. They're going to say, no, forget it. Because it's always before. Now, if he's always before you, that means his presence is with you. When his presence is not with you, he will not be before you. Does everybody understand this? Okay, watch this. Are you ready? In verse 8, let's speak it. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be what? I won't be moved out of position. I won't do something that's going to offend him. Not that I won't make a mistake. Verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in hell. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You shall show me the path of what? Life. In your presence is fullness of joy. 
at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Wow. See, it's his presence that, he, in his presence, it's like a dad that's showing up with all kinds of gifts and all, hey, I'm home. And he's got everything for me and you, but it's in his presence. He's carrying everything with him. So when we are in his presence, everything is available for me and you. But it only takes a few things to grieve him. Things we think, things we speak, and things we touch. Amen? Amen. It will grieve him. And I want you to grab hold of this because the first spirit that will replace his presence is a familiar spirit. Amen. And that familiar spirit will give you a sense, a false sense of God's presence. It will give you a false sense of peace. It will give you a false sense of joy. But it will not produce righteousness. It can't. Does everybody got this? And that spirit will speak to you. And he comes to put you in a place of deception. So that you're actually thinking you're hearing God's voice. And when he speaks to you, his purpose is to get you out of time with God. If he can get you out of time with God, he can snare you the rest. Because getting you out of time gets you out of position, gets you out of focus, and allows the enemy to eat you up, and you don't even know it, bit by bit by bit. Is everybody okay? Oh, glory. Let's go make another confession. Romans 8, 18. Let's speak it. For I consider that the sufferings, the sufferings, what kind of sufferings are you going through? Don't tell everybody about them, okay? Does God know what you're going through? He's the comforter, isn't he? He's the one that's going to bring you through it. What are you learning through it is the question. What are you learning through it? Don't blame nobody for your sufferings. We bring it all on ourselves. Amen? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to what? With the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. Wow. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the who? Sons of God. Who are they? They're us. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from what? The bondage of corruption into the glorious freedom of or liberty of the children of God. Everything is under bondage. It's under rule of Satan's kingdom. That's why. So, Christ came to pay the price, made the exchange, and gave me and you authority and dominion. Even though it's still under the rule of Satan's kingdom, you and I have dominion over it all. If you really know who you are. But if you don't know who you are, the devil still has dominion over you. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. That groaning in you is actually called intercession. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not seen, is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, are you ready? The Spirit also helps in our what? Weaknesses. What is the greatest weakness? Prayer. 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 Intercession. For we do not know what we should what? Pray. Pray. For as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be, that word uttered means understood. For he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes what? Intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also what? Predestined to be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? 
He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Remember, everything is available for me and you, but it's been locked by the powers of darkness. It's, in our, it's our responsibility to unlock them. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who, who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So he just talked about two individuals that are making intercession. The Holy Spirit is making intercession and Jesus. What two intercessors do you need more? You. You must now intercede to make all the connection. A threefold cord is hard to break. Woohoo! Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate God's love for you. It's the enemy that separates your love for him. So what we're seeing here is God is in releasing more and more of a desire in the area of a spirit of intercession. We are in a time for intercession that is so needed, it is incredible. The spirit of intercession. Listen, you and I must cooperate with the intercession of Christ Jesus and the intercession of the Holy Spirit. You pray in tongues, you're interceding. You pray the word, you're interceding. Has everybody got it? Jesus is in heaven interceding. When you and I are doing intercession and we are praying in intercession, we are now becoming the re resemblance of Christ. We are becoming the resemblance of Christ because the resemblance of Christ is the spirit of intercession. Jesus prayed. He didn't go to the cross. He didn't die on the cross first. He died in the garden through intercession. Intercession. That's what he's calling us to do. The groans of inner deep is intercession. Birthing. You're birthing things that are done already in the spirit that God has done already, and he's calling you to bring them into the physical through intercession. You are birthing these. That's what those groans are. They're birthing pains. There are elements of intercession. Hallelujah. We should be, have the ability to hear the voice of the Spirit while praying when you're doing intercession. Knowing His direction in the moment. There's something else about intercession. It is prophetic words. There are prophetic words. It's a prophetic offering that flows out of intercession for people, nations, government, current events. Using prophetic words by making declarations, binding demonic activity, again, bringing into existence in the natural what the Lord has already spoken in the spiritual. And the other thing is to write down these prophetic intercessional words so people can pray them. You know, I didn't realize what was really happening until the Holy Spirit said to me this morning. When he said, I want you to talk about the spirit of intercession. I'm thinking, man, we've talked about this before. Man, I looked it up in teachings. I couldn't find it all these years. We did not talk about the spirit of it. We've talked about intercession in prayer. But never really dedicated the arena of the spirit of intercession, which God is encouraging and releasing stronger now than ever before. And when he began to share with me about this, because of my prayer life and intercession life, I live a life of intercession. That is my life. 
I intercede for whatever needs to be done and whatever needs to be changed. That's how I spend my whole morning. My time in prayer is to intercede. Every believer should be an intercessor. Without intercession, you cannot advance. Without intercession, you can't overcome your enemy. Without intercession, you can't con convert your soul completed. It can't be completed. Without an intercession, you can't crucify your flesh. Without intercession, your spirit man can't get strong enough. Without intercession, you'll be living by emotion instead of truth. Intercession. Again, we write these prophetic prayers, these prophetic words of, 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 of intercession down to be used as a constant attack against darkness and penetrating the evil arenas. That's what the penetrating prayer booklet's about. Where is it? I didn't realize this till this morning. The Lord said to me, these are prophetic words of intercession. The penetrating prayer booklet. If people will begin to use these. Remember the spirit. What's the greatest weakness of an individual? What to pray. He's made it so simple. So these, this penetrating prayer booklet is nothing but prophetic words by the Holy Spirit of intercession to kick butt on the powers of darkness. That's what they're for. And it's amazing how many people, people get up, they go to work, thank you, Lord, for another day, protect me. They don't even get dressed with the full armor of God. Not realizing that they're going in a war zone and they wonder why they get beat up, wounded, and out of position. Intercession. We are called to be intercessors. Why? Because that's a call to priest. Your first calling is priesthood. And that is a duty of a priest to become an intercessor. Isaiah 53. If you're not an intercessor, you're not fulfilling your priesthood. And if you're not fulfilling your priesthood, you certainly can't become a warrior. Oh, hallelujah. Isaiah 53. When you become an intercessor, you stop the grumbling. You stop the blaming. You look beyond all of the garbage that the world wants to offer in your thoughts. You accept responsibility. How many people make a mistake and they blame her? Why you did Unconverted soul. Isaiah 53. Some people take, they can't take counsel, correction, and direction without them be, making it to where they're offended. It's because of lack of intercession. See, I'm telling you, intercession brings you to an end of you. If you're a person that truly intercedes. You know, Friday night through the anointing, when the Holy Spirit said, Listen, I just want you to name, mention my name. My name will cover everything. Just mention my name. You know how many people had a hard time to even speak the word Jesus? And they spoke it out of their head, not out of their heart. See, when you speak the name of Jesus, there's connection. Only if it's out of the heart. If it's out of the mind, ain't no connection. It's just another name, another word. But when we were speaking Jesus, Boom, his presence would come. Isaiah 53, verse 10. Is everybody there? Amen. Oh, glory. <clears throat> Let's speak it together. Hallelujah. Yet it pleased the Lord to what? Bruise who? Jesus. Can you imagine that? God was bruising his own son for me and you. It pleased the Lord to bruise him, to put him on the cross. It pleased him that he was whipped. It pleased him. Because he was seeing the end result. So many times we get caught up in our own circumstances and sufferings and don't see the end result. But if you're in the spirit, you'll see the end result in everything. If the Lord is before you, you're living from the future, not from the past. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, 
he shall see his seeds. He shall see his seed. He will see him in the future. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. This is all prophetic. He's seen in the future. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. We're getting the spoil. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. He bore the sin of many, and he did what? And made intercession for the transgressors. Think about this. Jesus prayed three times in the garden. He died in the garden. In fact, he prayed so hard he sweat blood. And then on the cross, they brought him through all the torture, pulling the beard, ripping his face, whipping him, hanging him, putting nails and spikes in his hands and his feet, and then piercing them in the side. And he has the final words. Forgive them for they know not what they do. What an intercessor. I know if it was me and you, we would want revenge. Kill them! <laughs> but if the Spirit of the Lord is on you, you don't think that way. The carnal man thinks that way. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, you look beyond people's faults. And your desire is just God touch them. <laughs> and slam them. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus suffered for mankind, paid the ultimate price as God's creator, becoming man. God himself became man. Took a part of himself. Jesus was in the bosom. Took a part of himself, called himself son. Still the same person. See, the Holy Spirit still has holes in his hands and his feet. The Father has holes in his hands and his feet. Because they're all one. Does everybody get this? Oh, glory. Jesus suffered for mankind, paid the ultimate price as God created as God creator, as the God creator, becoming man and, and man becoming the resemblance of Christ. That was the exchange he was making so that God became man and man come, could become the resemblance of him. Not that he's God, but the resemblance of him. Amen? Amen. And that can only happen by denying yourself. Through intercession, you cannot intercede unless you're willing to deny yourself. Again, the last words on the cross is, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Oh. It's amazing. After my visitation from the Lord, for so many weeks and months, those were the words that came out of my mouth when I saw people do stupid stuff. The only thing that I could say is, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And I realized how deception really takes people out of position. Satan's greatest weapon is, possession, is um, deception. And his power is fear. Hebrews chapter 7. The spirit of intercession is upon you. Hebrew. Spirit of intercession. <clears throat> Hebrews 7, 23, please. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from what? Continuing, because death prevented them from continuing. Amen. But he, Jesus, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. 
For such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the sins for, the, uh, uh, for people's. For this he did once and for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who have weaknesses, but the word of oath which came after the law appoints the Son who has been perfected forever. Jesus is high priest. He is called priest. Again, it is the duty of a priest to become an intercessor, to combat the unseen realm of darkness. These are, <clears throat> these are, in other words, as a priest, you and I are carrying the markings of Christ and the resemblance of his character. We are carrying the markings of Christ and the resemblance of his character. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, In verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Glory to God. Let's speak it. Therefore I exalt, first of all, that what? Supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of the Lord our God, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle, I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without what? Without, without what? Without wrath and without doubting. Wow. Without doubting. Let me share something important here. <laughs> no doubts in the attitude. You cannot have a doubt in your attitude. If you have a doubt in your attitude, it disqualifies. Does everybody get that? That's what the enemy wants to do, is bring doubt and unbelief. You prayed for something, you should have an expectation. But when you break, get out of position, then you doubt, it's gone. You have to reconnect that again. You have to reconnect that prayer. You have to reconnect that request. You have to reconnect that intercession because it's severed. Doubt will sever it. Does everybody get it? Unbelief will sever it. Well, I prayed about this 10 years ago. What happened? Well, I doubted. Did you pray about reconnect it again? No. Well, then it ain't happening. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. Supplications, prayers, and intercession with no doubting. No doubting. Amen? Acts chapter 19. Remember, we are now carrying the resemblance of Christ. We are carrying the markings of Christ. And the world, the unseen realm of this world will know it, whether you are or you're not. They know where they can get away with stuff in your life. Hello? Hello? or they know they can't get away with it. Amen. Acts 19 and verse 11. <clears throat> Let's speak it, please. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, 
and evil spirits went out of them. Wow. Now, I want you to know something that we're going to pray over these prayer booklets because they are prophetic words of intercession. Every day I pray, and I ask the Lord to anoint those prayer booklets. Does everybody get it? Why? So that anointing, when it goes forth, breaks every yoke of bondage, it will not return void. But you cannot doubt when you pray. You cannot waver. You must have an attitude of expectation. Or it gets cut loose, severed, and then it needs to be reconnected. Is everybody okay on that? Praise God. And it says that even the aprons and handkerchiefs were brought to them. I told you the story about the woman that was in a mental institution. There's a, uh, uh, an evangelist named uh, Shambach, and he traveled all over the world. And this one woman came up to him one day and said, here, take this piece of candy. And he said, what are you, crazy? And the Lord said, to, and the Lord rebuked him and said, put that piece of candy in your pocket. He put it in his pocket while he did service. They had a healing miracle service and so forth. And after the service, a woman came up to him and said, can I have my candy back? And he's like, what? She said, my oh, yeah, the candy. And he gave it to him. Well, he came back around and that stayed again a year later. And that woman came up to him afterwards and had another person with him. She goes, you remember me with the candy? He said, yeah, I remember that. A year ago, you gave me a piece of candy where said, well, this is my sister. She was in a mental institution, and we couldn't bring her anything, but they allowed her to have candy. Well, when she put the candy in her mouth, God delivered her and healed her, and she left the mental institution. That's the, called the point of contact through the anointing. So everybody got it? Well, I want you to know that there's a point of contact through the anointing with these prayers. That's why when you lay hands on the sick, there's a point of contact. Hello? That's when, you, by faith, you can receive the point of contact. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory. The point of contact. So God worked unusual miracles through these points of contact. Has everybody got it? In verse 13, is everybody there? Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. <laughs> Hallelujah. This, this is hilarious. People trying to use the name of Jesus who are not walking right with God. Also, these were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit said, answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who the heck are you, homie? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. <laughs> this became known both all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And the fear um, fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic or witchcraft brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Again, the powers of darkness know. They know whether you carry the markings and are a resemblance of Christ or not. Amen. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Oh, hallelujah. Spirit of intercession. So when you're praying in tongues, you're interceding. You're also magnifying God. In verse 1, it happened. After this, that the people of Moab, the people of Ammon, and others with them besides the Amorites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. They are Hazazen Tamar, which is in en Gedah. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast through all Judah. In other words, they were going to fast and pray. Somebody got it. In other words, this battle was impossible to win. They were totally outnumbered. 
So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and came to all, and from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God, our fathers of our fathers, are you not the God in heaven? And do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? And your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you. Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, everyone say, in your presence. In your presence. For your name is in this temple and the cry to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. And now here are the people of Oman, Moab, Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. There they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. What a confession. Does everybody get it? What a confession. Lord, I, I don't know what to do here. What do you want me to do? I can't do this. I'm, I, 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 can't, I can't do this. What do you want me to do? My, but my hope, my trust is in you. You know, so many times you just need to say out, I trust you, Lord, I trust you. No matter what you're going, you're declaring that. You're decreeing, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. What you're doing is you're reconnecting. I trust you. Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord and the spirit of the Lord answered them, came upon an individual and he answered them. And he said in verse 15, listen all you Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They shall surely come up by the ascent of Zids and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jorel. You will not need to fight in this battle, praise God. But they must participate in it. They're not fighting in it, but they're participating. He said, position yourself. Position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem, and do not fear nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, and the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all the Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. They were doing what? They worshipped him. Then the Levites and the children of the Quarites and the children of the Quarites and stood up to praise the Lord in Israel with voices loud and high. Praise the Lord, voices loud and high. We do that. We even dance. What we're doing, we're shooing all the powers of darkness out. Hallelujah. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, your half stood and and said, hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall what? Be established. And believe his prophets. Breathe, believe the prophetic words, and you shall what? Prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, and he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and to sh who should praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army, and they were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures for... So I love this, because they went out before the military. So the military sent out the praise, the Lord sent out the praise and worship leaders before the military. Amen? I'd like to see that on aircraft carriers. Praise and worship team on aircraft carriers. <laughs> Calling down destructive fire. Binding the powers and principalities of wickedness in heavenly places. Do you know, I mean, getting intercessors. They need to have an intercessor room on every one of our ships. Oh, glory. I need to talk to Trump. Verse 22, now when they began to sing and praise the Lord, what did the Lord do? He set ambushes against the people of Amamoah, Mount Sira, who had come against Judah, 
And they were defeated. How were they defeated? They killed each other. God set confusion in the camp. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and utterly killed and destroyed them. And when they made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. They killed each other. Snap. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth, and no one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, that double portion, that prosperity, that abundance, they came to take away. They found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Wouldn't it be wonderful for three days that you're collecting all of this jewels and whatever it is God is releasing to you? I'm telling you it's coming. But this is not, the end result was beautiful, but the beginning of it started with fear. And they sought the Lord, and they praised and worshipped. Why? Because they did spiritual warfare. They attacked. They sent out the jets, spiritual jets. We sent out angels destroying the principalities and so forth. Every morning, I call down destructive fire in areas and demonic arenas. Listen, what does the word say? If my people will humble themselves and seek my face, I'll heal the land. Amen? We are here now. We're here now. There's a time right now of intercession being so needed so that we can attack the powers of darkness. Again, the Democratic Party is the left of the evil host promoting a Luciferian agenda and taking captive many lives of deception. They lie, they cheat, and they're on their way to hell and don't even know it. But you know, God desires no one to perish. So we must intercede so that God will remove the blinders off of their eyes. There must be intercession to expose, remove, and reveal. Amen? In Romans 8.13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone say, I'm called as a priest. A son and child of God, servant of the Most High, to become an intercessor and fulfill my priesthood in Jesus' name. Romans 8, 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to stink and die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you're going to live. Hallelujah. You want to live? Live in the Spirit. You want to die? Stay in the flesh. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but to receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. For the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and of children than heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be what? Glorified together. We, if we are led by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, we are sons and daughters of God. L being led by the Spirit means that God is leading you to intercede. You are an intercessor. Amen? Amen. Why? Because you are carrying the markings and resemblance of Christ. It's going to take two things, yielding and obeying. Amen. It's going to take what? Yielding and obeying. That's why the word says, submit to God so you can resist the devil. That's why many people can't resist the devil. They ain't submitting to God. You got to yield, then you got to obey. The Holy Spirit is looking for someone to yield to him, then obey him. So that when you hear him, you obey. You don't hear him and question him. And I'm going to close it. Revelation 5. Spirit of Intercession. Well, I'm not going to close at Revelation 5. Okay. 
I want to go to Isaiah 59 for a second. <laughs> this point must be made. Isaiah 59. Then maybe Revelation 5. God willing. Revelation, I mean, uh, Isaiah 59. Then we'll go to Revelation 5. This is a very important point. Isaiah 59. Is everybody there? In verse 14. Isaiah 59, verse 14. Justice is what? Turn back. And righteousness stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Sounds like today's time, doesn't it? So truth fails, but he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Then the Lord saw it, and it, was, it displeased him that there was no justice. It seems like that that's what's happening now. It's been going on. There's been no justice. The only justice has been unjust. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was what? No intercessor. Why was there no intercessor? Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him and his own righteousness. It has sustained him. For he put on righteous, put on righteous as breastplate, a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, according to he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, the coastlands he will fully repay. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and for his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemies come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them. That's through intercession. The Redeemer will come to Zion and those who turn from the transgressions in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them, my spirit who is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants, descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. So he's already put the words in your mouth. They're in your spirit. As you begin to yield and obey, you'll have intercession. Let's close it, Revelation 5. Spirit of intercession. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 5. Oh, let's start at verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. And I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with the seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who was worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and to read the scroll or look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes, which are seven spirits of God, sent out into the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So listen, your prayers and intercession fall into the bowls. And they sang a new song say, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us what? Kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. 
Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the sea and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. Then the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. So you and I are called to be priests and kings, but you must fulfill your priesthood to become a king, which is a warrior. Amen. And a responsibility and duty of a priest is to become an intercessor. Amen. Amen. We are in the time where the spirit of intercession is desiring each and every believer in the body of Christ. Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word today. Let revelation and impartation, let counsel, correction, and conviction come forth and release repentance for every one of us that have neglected intercession, our prayer life, that have caused harm to ourselves and others. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. Continue to wash us with the blood, heal us with the stripes, and help us come to the end of ourself so that we can intercede for those who have been taken captive, so that your name would be glorified and your kingdom would expand in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen.